All right, let's start again. Hello, everyone. My name is Hal. This is Quail Studios Guitar. We are going to play and teach Fields of Gold today. I might just cut out that whole beginning part. And uh, this is by Sting. But we're not just going to talk about Fields of Gold, just like this is how you play it, that kind of thing. We're also going to talk about the structure of the song. Let me pull up a document that I was doing. So, uh, you know, this song seems really simple at first when you listen to it. You know, it's like, wow, that's really simple because there's not very many chords in it. Uh, but, and it's actually in B minor, you know, like this. If I were to play, you remember me when the west wind moves on the fields of Bali. You know, I'm, I'm actually, I don't have these chords in front of me, so I have to kind of guess. That's the key that it's in, the original key. And uh, I did some research on this, and I decided not to play it with a B minor chord. Well, you can play it with a B minor chord like this. Now I've got my classical guitar here. I'm going to take a capo, put it on the first, second fret, and you can play an A minor chord with a capo on the second fret, and you get the B minor chord. You remember me when the west wind moves upon the fields of barley. Okay, that's the original key. <laughs> Excuse me. That's the original key that Sting uh, was playing the uh, song in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the capo off, and I'm going to play it in A minor. So on my lead sheet, I'm going to actually have, it's going to say capo second fret, and it's going to have an A minor chord, like that, which is really a B minor chord. But I'm going to teach it with no capo today. And the reason is because it makes certain things very simple and easier. And I like that, and it sounds really good. Okay, let's go back to, hold on. Let me pull up my document here. So, uh, you know, I want you to know that this is really simple, but also, let me pull up something here and show you on the screen. Okay, this is going to be, let's see. There we go. There's a cake. All right, so when you make a cake, it's very plain, right? You start out with something like this, and then you get something, okay, where is it at? Like that, when you're done, right? So you start out with something very simple, and this is the structure of the cake. But when you get done with it, you can decorate the cake, right? You can put things all around it and make it look any way you want. I only have this particular <laughs> uh, decorated cake, right? But this is where it started out. That's how it finished. Now, the same thing happens with something like a Christmas tree. You can start with the tree, and this is your basic structure. Now, this particular one has lights on it already. But then if you do this to it, this is the same tree, you know, you can decorate it like this, and you can make it as gaudy as you want. You can do anything you want with it. You can put any colors you want with it. But you start with a basic idea, and then you decorate the tree. And this is exactly what happens when you have a song. We're going to start out with a basic chord progression, basic chords, and then we can decorate them, right? So you want to be able to do this. In fact, I like to do this with, uh, you know, with students... Let me go back over here so I can see you guys. There we go. Give me a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing. I only have two likes right now. Come on, guys. Everybody gives me a thumbs up. Okay, so I'm going to start on A minor. Now, right there at the beginning, you hear like a, um, a harmonic, a 12th fret harmonic on the E string or something. But when it's in B minor, it's up here. right? Something like that, right? But I'm going to do it right there on the 12th fret E. That's actually a decoration. And then there's also this really cool little melody. Let me see if I've got it programmed in here. Yeah, I've got that programmed in my, in my looper there. So we're going to start with an A minor chord. You remember me. And we're going to talk about the key that we're in also. When the west wind moves got an F chord. So we go from A minor to F. What key are we in? 
upon the fields of barley You'll forget the sun at A minor and his jealous F sky C As we walk A minor in fields of gold Right there, that feels like we're home, like we're finally home. So when it goes like this, oh, I played that wrong. Let's do that again. One, two, three, four. Right, that's that little flute melody or whatever that thing is that's in the in the in the song. It, it's actually right here. Sorry. So it goes right here. It's a C note. Second fret on the B string. Open. Second fret on the G string. Open. Third fret on the D string. G. Open string. And then third fret D string up to the first fret B string to the second fret D string. Like that. So it goes one, two, three, four, five. Two, three. Sorry, I messed that one up. So that's it. Wish you could stay. Oh, D, you're going to leave? At work. Boo, have to watch later, but just had to take a peek. Hey, you're welcome, D. Thanks for being here. We'll catch you later. Shoot me an email or something and we'll talk. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're in the key of C, but it starts on A minor. We're also going to talk about the melody in just a minute, but that's your basic chord progression. A minor. You'll remember me when the west wind moves. You can use an F like that or the bar chord F. I love that with that low F. Upon the fields of Bali. And then it goes down to A minor. You'll forget the sun in his jealous sky. Back to C. As we walk in fields of gold. We're going to talk about cadences here. Da, da, da. Oh, sorry. Da, 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 da. That's the first verse. Okay. So let's go back to, let's see. Let me go back to my paper here and talk about this. I need to remind myself because, okay, so the bare bones. We just talked about the bare bones of what's going on. That's what I call it, as bare bones. It's like, you know, skeleton, right? You put things on it. That's what we were talking about just a second ago when we had the cake with no decorations or the tree with no decorations. That's just a bare structure, and that's this is the bare structure of fields of gold. So let's talk a little bit about cadences. I've talked about cadences before in different videos. A cadence is when we go G to C, a, uh, like a G7. Now, there's no G7s, I don't think, in this particular song going to C, but there's a G going to C, I believe. Maybe you could put it in, you know. But uh, right there at the beginning, at, the, at that first verse, there's no G to C. It's G to A minor, and that's the only one we have. And then we have an F to C. Now, there's different kinds of cadences, and we're going to talk about three different cadences right now. There's a perfect cadence, and that's when you play like G to C, the dominant to the tonic. There's a plagal cadence, that's what it's called. Sometimes they call it an amen cadence because they use it in hymns. Amen, like that. It's an F chord going to a C chord in the key of C. And there's a bunch of plagal cadences in this song, and I'm going to point them out. And there's also a deceptive cadence. That's like if you have a... a, a chord progression and you play a G, which is the dominant in this key, and you think they're going to go to C, right? But they don't do that. They go to A minor. And that happens a bunch of times in this song too. So there's deceptive cadences and there's plagal cadences and there are a few perfect cadences. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to play the beginning of this song, okay? So um, now in the actual recording... Let's see here. Um, there's some really interesting notes, but I'm not 
I'm not going to worry about those. Like there's a there's a seventh, I think, and I think there's also a ninth in there. When you listen to it, and there's an E harmonic. It's really cool. Um, you got some really nice harmonies going in there, but we're not talking about that right now. You'll remember me when the west wind moves upon the fields of barley. You'll forget the sun in his jealous sky as we walk in fields of gold. And then right there uh, in the song it goes. So she took her love for to gaze a while upon the fields of barley. In his arms she fell as her hair came down among the fields of gold. Now that's actually the whole verse, right? So let's talk about the cadences in it. We start with an A minor chord, and we're also gonna talk about the melody a little bit because the analyzation of the melody is amazing. It really is. So he starts out with a, you'll remember me. What note is he singing there? He's actually singing a G, right? If I just play an A minor chord, that G is not in the A minor chord. If I add it in, it's an A minor seven. Now, some people like to play the G up here, like an A minor seven like that. For this song, I would not do that. I would not put the G on top, the A minor seven, because it just sticks out too much. It's, it's better for blues and things like that. But this one, I would hide it inside. You remember me. Now you could play an A minor seven instead of just an A minor or you can play an A minor and sing that G. You remember me when the west wind moves. Right there, west wind, what note is that? That's a G note, wind, and that's not in the F chord either. West wind moves, and it goes from a G to a, back up to an A note, it's really cool. It has these non-harmonic tones in the melody. You'll remember me when the west wind moves upon the fields of barley. When you'll forget the sun in his jealous sky. That's a G again. As we walk. What note is that? Walk. That's an F. Walk. Now I'm playing an A minor chord. He's singing an F note. As we walk in fields of, and that's an E note, fields, which is which is a non-harmonic tone also. As we walk in fields, so as we say walk, walk, that's a non-harmonic tone, in, and then it relaxes, fields of, then it goes to a chord tone, go. And that's an, a deceptive cadence, because instead of going, as we walk in fields of gold, it goes, as we walk in fields of gold, A minor to F to C. And that's a plagal cadence that we talked about before, F to C. So she took her love for to gaze a while upon the fields of Bali. In his arms she fell as her care came down among the fields of gold. Right there, there's a perfect cadence because it goes, uh, as her hair came down, C, A minor, among, that's an F again, among the fields of G to C, gold. Let me look at my comments here and see what's going on. Uh, let's see here, a minor key, yes. Well, no, this is not in a minor key, Sean. This is in C major. It just starts on the sixth chord, or the A minor. Let's see, let's see, take care. This version is in your book, How? Gotta learn this one. This is not in my book right this moment. I'm going to put it in my book. And I haven't updated the book this month because I was working on a project. I just did a video, a little bit of video about that. I'll release that later. 
Um, I'm going to put it in, and I will put it in my book. What's today? The fourth. I will put it in, like, in the next two days and release it. Okay, I'll do that. Hello, everyone. I am late. Lisa, hello, Lisa. Let's see. I'm just going down here to see if there's any questions. <laughs> Glad to be here. Nashville. Yes, Nashville. Manchester, UK. Hello, Greg Roberts. Very good. Let's see here. I know Mike Lee. Okay, you guys are just having fun with each other. How does it sound good then if the note is sung and not in the chord? I suppose it's still in the key. That's a really good question, Sean. What happens is that we don't sit on that note the whole time. When you sing a, uh, a non-harmonic tone like that, um, you'll focus, let's see, as we walk in, the word, the note walk is a non-harmonic tone. The note in is a harmonic tone. So it's like tension relaxation. As we walk in fields of, the word fields is a non-harmonic tone going to of, fields of, which is a harmonic tone. It's in the, right there, fields of gold, right there. Deepa, Ima, hello. A leaper's coming. Very good, very good. Thank you very much, a leaper's, for coming to see us. Let's see. Mike says, I play guitar every week with a guitar player that wrote, recorded, and toured with CSN a long time ago. CSN. CSN. Uh-oh, it's not coming to me. That's not Creedence Clearwater. That'd be CC, CC, yeah, no, no, CCR. See who's CSN. Mike, tell me who, who CSN is. I'm not getting it. Okay. So that's the reason that the non-harmonic, non-harmonic tones are good. It's like, it's like sweet and sour chicken, sweet and sour pork. It's like bitter chocolate, bittersweet chocolate. It's like, mm, it's like this little bit of bitterness and then it relaxes let's see here crosby stills and nash oh sorry <laughs> why didn't i think of that right crosby stills and nash i love crosby stills and nash very cool excellent okay let's go to verse two this is just like verse one right see the west wind move like a love no no i'm sorry will you stay with me it starts with will you stay with me Will you stay with me? Will you be my love among the fields of barley? We'll forget the sun in his jealous sky as we lie in fields of gold. A minor deceptive cadence. Da -na -da -na -da. Plagal cadence. Na -na -na. See the west wind move like a lover's soul upon the fields of barley feel her body rise when you kiss her mouth among the fields of gold now what i did there when i went the bass line does that right from the c chord to the a minor feel her body rise and the melody does that feel her body rise so then it goes into a bridge and we've got an F chord here. Cake, pork, chocolate now. Making me hungry tonight. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm not trying to crash the party with my stories. It's great. No, Lee, uh, you can say anything you want, Mike. No problem. You guys just talk in the chat, and I'll teach here, okay? If there's anything really important and you have a question, I'll look over here and see if I can see anything. Maybe you should put like a little asterisk or something like that, and then I'll go, oh, yeah, that's a question. Okay, let's talk about the, the bridge. It goes from F to C. This is in the key, right? I never made promises lightly And there have been some that I've broken But I swear in the days still left We'll walk in fields of gold We'll walk in fields of gold and then it goes to a lead. We'll talk about the brilliance of this song and the simplicity in just a second. <laughs> now the reason I think that this song is really brilliant 
partially because it's it's kind of simple, but if you listen to the harmonies, there's some complexities in there that I'm not talking about. That's Those are the decorations that we talked about a little earlier. Um, and you can do that. Like, can you do an A minor? Many years have passed since those summer days Among the fields of barley See the children run as the sun goes down Among the fields of gold Then he goes back to, you'll remember me, just like the beginning. You'll remember me when the west wind moves Upon the fields of barley You can tell the sun in his jealous sky When we walked in fields of gold When we walked in fields of gold When we walked in fields of gold And it goes like this And does this for a while This is a C I'm in the key of C And he plays it in the key of, of uh, D But, you know, I'm in the key of C This is a C with an F ba- excuse me, F with a C bass. C to F with a C bass. So that that that's C stays the same right at the end. We've never done this before in this song, just right here. He does this eight times. One more time. And then it stops. Right? So the part of the brilliance of the song, he, he doesn't do anything too long that wears it out. Like, he doesn't do that at all, except right there at the end, so it's really fresh. Um, the bridge is very simple. I never made promises lightly. Just an F to a C, right? When you have something like that, it's really easy to jam to, like, to F to C, a four chord to a one chord. I put this in my looper. (laughs) Right? I could jam to that. Right there, I just as I was jamming on that, I never made promises lightly. That's he's singing a G, which is not in the F chord, right? And there have been some that I've broken, but I swear in the days still left. It's these little brilliant things that Sting does, right? Those little non harmonic tones. Now, in an F, that's a sus2. That's a basically an add2 or something like that. It's like an F sus2. I never made promises lightly, and there have been some that I've broken. I'm putting that G as I'm playing that uh, bar chord. I'm putting the G right in the top. That's where in the days still left. But you know what? When I play this song, I would not put that G in. I mean, you could, but I like to have the vocal stand alone. So it's like, They never made promises lightly And there have been some that I've broken So that's So right? So that G is the 2 or the 9, like an an F add 9. Sorry? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's an F add 9. But when he's singing it down here, right, it's more like a two. So that's the brilliance of this. Very simple, very brilliant. We'll walk in fields of gold. And right there, you have that non-harmonic tone. Walk in fields. Let's see. Walk in. Non-harmonic tone to harmonic tone. Field, non-harmonic tone to 
harmonic tone go. And that's a C, which is the root of the chord. Let me look over here. Are those, yes, these are nylon strings. I'm playing my classical guitar today. Yes, tips on the strumming hand. Check out Ava Cassidy's version. I will break your heart when you realize cancer took her far too soon. Yes. Yeah, I've heard that one. It's beautiful, Eva Cassidy. Not trying to crash. Okay, let's see here. Let's talk about the... Yeah, oh, I forgot. I'm so glad you talked about... You asked about the strum. Because what's happening here is another thing that's really great. You know... You'll remember me when the west wind moves. One, two, three, four... When I'm doing that, you'll notice that when I'm playing that um, F chord, let me check my tuning. I'll tell you that when my heater goes on, sometime my, yep, my G string went out of tune, went sharp. When the, <laughs> when the temperature changes, if it warms up, these uh, high, st high strings go out. There we go. That's better. The reason it does that, it's not because the strings are uh, stretching. It's because the neck kind of expands a little bit. It's kind of interesting on this guitar. I discovered that years ago. Okay, so the strumming. to count the eighth notes. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Now I could count the quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But what I'm doing is I'm hitting, uh, I'm strumming on the first beat and then on beat one and two and on two and right there. Now if I, if I count it like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 Like that. What's happening is I've got three beats and then I've got an accent on beat four. On we're talking about eighth notes here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's like three and five instead of four and four. Right? You don't want to go. You'll remember me when the west wind moves. So what happens is he says me on that accent. You'll remember me when the west wind moves upon the fields of barley. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 One, two, three. So some of those chords are actually changing on that beat two and a half, right? Um, You'll remember me when the west wind moves upon the fields above. It's coming up. We'll forget the sun in his jealous sky. Right there. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Walk in fields. Right there again. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, one, two, three, four. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right there again. So you have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Those are the counts. Um, does that make sense? So you gotta watch that. You gotta really listen. Now, the other day, I think it was last week, we talked about listening. Oh no, it was a couple of weeks ago some of those practice things that you need to do. You need to listen to this song if you don't know it super, super good. If you don't, if you don't have it in your head and you can't get it out, you, don't, you haven't heard it enough if you're trying to play it. You need to listen to it, listen to it, listen to it, listen to it. And then you, you can play along with it, right? Now, if you're gonna play along with Sting, you're gonna need to put the capo on the second fret, like that, and play it in this key. You'll remember me when the west wind moves on the fields of 
Bali You'll forget the sun in his jealous sky As we walk in fields of gold Right? And you'll do that to play along with Sting. Let me look at here. Let's see. Everything, every little thing he does is magic. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. I love it. Okay. No. My sister-in-law has had it. Let's see. Let's go back to Hal. <laughs> Why does a classical guitar have a wide neck? This is Mike. Mike's asking the question. Because, um, well, it, it has a couple of different things. It not only has a two-inch neck. This is a regular size classical guitar. It's a 25 and a half inch, 25.5 inch uh, scale length, and it's just like, not that guitar, just like my other guitars, not my bass guitar, but you know what I mean. Uh, the two-inch neck, it has to do with uh, finger picking. It's a little bit easier to finger pick when it's got a little bit wider neck on it. It's also flat. The neck is flat. There's no radius to it. There's no curve to the neck. So it's really flat, right? That's just the way classical guitars are. And usually, now I'm playing it on my leg, right there. A classical guitar, let me, let me show you. Let me pull my camera down. So I was playing it like this, right? But a classical guitar is played like this. Actually, I dropped my leg a little bit more. Oops. Okay, that's the way it is. All right, I liked it. I put my uh, my leg uh, and on a stool right here so you can see my guitar. So it's in the in the uh, in the window. Let's see. String of good. I'm looking at my uh, looking at the chat. See if there's any other questions. Okay. Okay. Played both very average. You know, um, classical guitar. I love classical guitar. I don't love classical music on the guitar. I mean, it takes a lot of work to play classical guitar. I mean, I love classical guitar, but I'm not really super into it. I love folk music and rock music and the kind of music that I do on my channel most of the time. Um, that's my... And I love singing and playing. That's my thing, right? Uh, it's not just... Uh, there's some really great arrangements. In fact, Shut Up and Play. You ever heard of Shut Up and Play? The uh, channel... He has a really nice version of this particular song, drop D tuning, and I think he's playing it in the key of D. I'm not sure. I'd have to... Well, anyway, drop D tuning, and he's playing uh, a solo version, a uh, finger-picking version of this song. It's fantastic. I love it. It's really great. Okay, you know what? Let's see. Um, yeah. Sean says he started on classical. Now I love my electric and I play a steel string. So do I. I've got my electric somewhere back there and I love my classical and I love steel string guitars. Okay, very good. I think that's all I'm going to talk about for Fields of Gold. Now, if you want this lead sheet and a little bit of tab that I'm going to create on it, um, look in the description. You can figure out from there how you can get my book. And that's by making a donation, right? And uh, you can email me, and I'll give you the details on that. You can pay through PayPal. You can make a donation over at uh, Subscribestar or Patreon. Um, email me if you have any questions and that kind of thing. My email is uh, lessonswithhal at gmail.com. All right. Anybody else? I'm going to go hang out with my patrons, with my supporters, with the people that give me a little bit of cash. Uh, and I love to hang out with those guys. If they have any questions, we're going to answer those now. And we're going to go and do that. All right? We'll see you later. Now, if you're not a member or, you know, haven't done that, you're welcome to come over. Seriously. Anytime. It doesn't cost a lot of money, just a little bit. 
and uh, I'll be buying your book. Great, Mike. Yeah, no problem. If you have any question, Mike, just give me a call. I mean, you know, email me or whatever. Actually, those people, some of these people on here have my phone number, and they text me every once in a while, and we have little conversations. If you'd like to do that, text, uh, <laughs> give me a, uh, an email, and I'll let you know how that works. Thank you very much, Sean. You guys have a great weekend. Love you. Take care. Let's see. I'm going to go out with something here. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, give me a thumbs up, guys. Okay, take care. See you later.